Hey, what's up everybody? Nexel here. Today we are playing Kingdom Hearts Union Cross and I am going to be doing a video that I've wanted to do for a long, long time. So this is my first ever top 10 video for Kingdom Hearts Union Cross where I'm going to talk about what I believe are the top 10-ish medals for Kingdom Hearts Union Cross. Now, before we get into this, we have a few things to talk about. So the first thing is going to be how I graded these medals. So what I did is that I pretty much dug up all the resources, went to Kingdom Hearts Union Cross Tracker, and I just got all the data. I got the names, I got the attributes, the damage plus, the buffs for each one, uh, unique skills that the medal had, so I put all that together and compiled it onto an Excel sheet so I could kind of see how the medals pair when they're like right next to each other, you know, like does this one give good buffs in comparison? How much strength does this have to an, in comparison to another one? So there was a lot of stuff that took it, I took into consideration when I decided to grade these medals. But when it comes down to the gist of it, so aside from the numbers that we saw there, I did grading based on a few different cri criteria here. So one of the criteria is versatility or utility. So how well does this metal work in the grand scheme of things? You know, are you able to use it in different scenarios? Does it only fit in one scenario? How often are we going to be using this metal versus just the very few limited times that a metal becomes useful? So that is one criteria that I graded on. The second thing is the ability to be a standalone metal. Now, a lot of people have a lot of thoughts on a lot of metals, but when you think about these metals, how good are they alone? Are you able to use it in a quest where it says you can only use one metal? Is it something that needs to be supplemented by a bunch of other metals prior to its activation in order for you to get the most benefit out of it? So generally, I ranked things that are able to carry themselves higher than those that needed a lot of support in order to work the best because if you need a lot of setup it means you're putting more resources into something and I just think that just doesn't define how well a metal is as a standalone metal we can't just be talking about how metals work in combos because of course combos can make anything a lot better if it's comboed properly however we are talking about single standalone metals um, for the most part so the third thing that I added for unique uh, grading is going to be how well the metal syncs with setups. So does it work, again, in like multiple setups? Does it work in only one setup? Is it only working on one keyblade or does it work on all of them? So that was one of the criteria that I used in order to grade. And then lastly, I based it on uniqueness slash irreplaceability. So how good is that metal at doing what it does? And if you took that metal out, what would you replace it with? Is there something better that's out currently? Or is this so good that it can't be replaced? So those were like pretty much the grading criteria that I used. We have to do a little bit of a disclaimer before we start our video here. So the first thing is that we are not including copy metals. And the reason behind that is because a copy metal is only as good as what it's copying. So technically, it has zero standalone ability. It really needs something there. Um, if you use it without anything to copy, it pretty much just uses a very dinky attack that does like a okay amount of damage. But really, a copy metal, because it can become anything, can just have way too much of a variety of usefulness. So it's kind of like the number zero, you know? It's like everything and nothing all at the same time. So we're not going to include copy metals because of their distinct ability to become anything else. So we are going to not include them. The next thing is that metals with similar effects are going to be lumped together in the same category. So for example, we have uh, HD Aqua, which is a magic clone of HD Terra, which is a power clone of HD Ventus, which is a speed clone of HD Aqua. And you get my point here. So if the metal is pretty much the same ability just with different attributes, if it has the same buffs and everything like that, I'm pretty much counting it as the same metal, and it'll be placed in the same, again, like, group as the rest of them. So that is another disclaimer here. Uh, the next disclaimer is that every metal has its place, and some will work better in certain scenarios than others. So that's to say that, again, these metals aren't the most powerful. I just think that they're the best. I think that they have all the criteria that I talked about before. So, for example, one might make the argument that Kingdom Hearts 3 Maleficent is one of the best medals in the format. So let's go ahead and pull her up here. So the reason that people say this is because of her ability to buff. So she will max out reverse buffs and debuffs and then max out uh, magic buffs and debuffs. So yes, Maleficent does work in certain scenarios and by all means she surpasses some of the medals that are going to be on my list based on the scenario that you're in. But again, we're talking versatility. We're talking about a lot of different unique grading criteria here. So 
just know that all metals have their place. If you're able to find where it works better, then by all means go with that. And lastly, before we get started, by all means, this is just my opinion. This is what I think are the best 10 medals in Kingdom Hearts Union Cross. If you think that differently, by all means, that is totally your right to decide on that. Um, this is just based on my experience with the game. Again, based on that grading criteria that I listed a little bit ago. So by all means, you are entitled to your opinion. This one is mine, and hopefully it'll help some people kind of find their place with, like, how they see the medals hopefully it adds like a different perspective as to how we should be able to see medals moving on to the actual top 10 best kingdom hearts union cross medals in my opinion list we start off at the number 10 slot with kingdom hearts 3 monster sora kingdom hearts 3 monster sora was introduced a long time ago and it introduced the defense break mechanic that is a staple for pvp at this point with that ability to break defense boost max by 30 percent that introduced a huge method of dealing damage to an enemy in pvp and from that point onwards it was again the staple for being able to compete in pvp having multiple defense break medals on your setup it also has the ability to pretty much self buff itself and self debuff the enemy so what that means is that it's going to give you all the buffs you need minus the general strength and the general defense so in terms of standalone ability it has a very solid standalone ability being able to increase your upright strength by 15 and your magic strength by 15 and decreasing the enemy's upright defense by 15 and magic defense by 15 so it's a metal that almost has the capacity to take care of itself it is single target but again you're using it mainly for pvp so i think it's honestly a very standalone metal it has a very unique ability and it is definitely worthy of the top 10 spot on my list now I know a lot of people will debate whether it's going to be this medal or Kingdom Hearts 3 Roxas and it was kind of a toss up for me which one was going to get the number 10 slot. It was definitely between those two for me. So what I had to do is we always do the safe thing and we talk about the math. So let's go ahead and take a look at Monster Sora's stats first. So what we did is we pretty much made a comparison where we compared is Monster Sora who is weaker than KH3 Roxas, more viable in PvP than KH3 Roxas. So what we did is we calculated the base damage taking us Monster Form Sora's max multiplier at that 11.3, which is based on how much health you have, which is very, very obtainable. We multiplied it times his maximum amount of strength, and we're looking at a base damage of 295,822-ish. So this next equation, or this next like math sequence, is pretty much to describe how much damage are we actually doing if the defense break actually goes off 30% of the time? So it's going to be the base damage times the amount of damage the enemy's actually taking. So that first line where it's times 0.1, that's because defense boost 5 max has the ability to decrease the damage that you're taking by 90%. So that 0.1 represents the 10% of damage that the enemy's taking from Monster Sora's attack times 0.7 which again that 0.7 represents the percentage that the enemy is not getting hit with defense break so after you do all that math it comes out to roughly 20,000 for the amount of damage they're taking without defense break now we factor in the defense break in the next line where we take the base damage multiply it times one because the enemy is taking 100 percent of that damage so that's represented by that one there and this happens 30 percent of the time so that 0.3 there coming out to an average of about 88,746 damage for the defense break stat so what we do is we just add those two together and we get an average damage of 109,454 so what we do for that next is compare it to Kingdom Hearts 3 Roxas. So Kingdom Hearts 3 Roxas does have a higher multiplier and a higher base damage. So it comes out to 435,300 for the base damage. We do the same math with Kingdom Hearts 3 Roxas that we did for Kingdom Hearts 3 Monster Sora. And after all of that, because it's only 15% chance defense break with the Kingdom Hearts 3 Roxas, the average damage actually comes out to a little bit less than Kingdom Hearts 3 Monster Sora. Not only that, but Kingdom Hearts 3 Sora actually, I'm sorry, Kingdom Hearts 3 Monster Form Sora actually does more hits than Roxas. So because Roxas does fewer amounts of hits, if you're not getting off those defense breaks, you're left with pretty much a metal that just does straight damage that could have been replaced with another defense break metal. It could have been replaced with like some sort of, I don't know, angelic amber that's copying a Monster Form Sora. So keep that in mind that monster form sora on average does a little bit more damage than kingdom hearts 3 roxas and when it comes to pvp that could mean everything 
So that's why I put Kingdom Hearts 3 Monster Form Sora over Kingdom Hearts 3 Roxas as the number 10 slot on my top 10 list. For the 9th slot in this top 10 list, it goes to Kingdom Hearts 3 Vanitas. Now, the only reason, and honestly, it's it's a few things that made this medal crack number 9 on this top 10 list, and really what it boils down to is its attribute and its ability to self-buff, as well as overwriting. So that is just so huge for Kingdom Hearts 3 Vanitas. Kingdom Hearts 3 Vanitas has the ability to overwrite your reverse buffs and your speed buffs, as well as the enemy's reverse uh, debuffs and speed debuffs. It has the ability to overwrite that to pretty much the maximum. Now, when people remember when the Foretellers came out and they had the overwrite ability to pretty much bring you up to max strength and then bring the enemy down to like max debuffs, that was super broken back in the day. And I still think that Kingdom Hearts 3 Vanitas holds this tradition of overwrite being a solid choice if it maxes out your buffs. The only thing it's missing is the general attack and the general defense debuffs. But overall, this is the only reverse speed metal that has this sort of capacity right now. The only thing that comes close to Kingdom Hearts 3 Vanitas, in my personal opinion, is going to be Kingdom Hearts 3 Marluxia, but that's for single target enemies only. When you get yourself into a group of enemies where you have to fight multiple things all at the same time, that Marluxia is only going to be doing debuffs on one of those enemies, not all of them. Whereas Kingdom Hearts the Vanitas will take care of all the enemies' debuffs and then allow you to proceed with the rest of your setup. Um, it is, again, the only reverse speed metal that has this sort of unique ability. And because of that, it's almost irreplaceable on some setups where you need to have it be the max buffer for like a reverse setup. Like, let's just say you're going in with Lady Luck. Lady Luck has both upright and reverse slots, and Kingdom Hearts 3 Vanitas can fit in that second slot, I believe, very, very well to make sure that whatever your reverse speed metal is in that last slot has the maximum amount of buffs and debuffs so that it does the maximum amount of damage. So because of this unique ability of Kingdom Hearts 3 Vanitas, it earned the number 9 slot on my top 10 list. The number 8 slot for my top 10 best Kingdom Hearts Union Cross medals for August 2019 is going to go to a medal I don't even have. Supernova Terra Aqua and Ventus is going to take this spot and it takes it at a well deserved spot. With that 17.22 multiplier which is insane, only beat out by Guardian Form Sora who actually has a lower strength stat than Supernova Terra Aqua and Ventus, it is a damage dealing medal. You still see it today and it came out like 7 months ago. 7? Six, something along those lines but it has a super high multiplier it has a required gauge cost of four with that additional plus two making it a six gauge cost if you don't have an sp skill on it but with an sp skill it can bring it down to uh, pretty much a mandatory two gauge cost and it also has like fantastic buffs pretty much almost filling out a lot of solid buffs here it gives you upright strength it gives you max psm strength it debuffs the enemy by the maximum amount of upright and psm debuffs it just has a lot of stuff going for it granted it does have to be fighting a single enemy to hit that 17.22 multiplier but it's just so useful and it's retained its value over so many different months and i definitely think it deserves the number eight slot especially when it comes to fights where we have to fight big beefy boss enemies Kingdom Hearts, I'm sorry, not Kingdom Hearts 3, but Supernova, Terra, Aqua, and Ventus is definitely a solid staple for some people still to fight those quests off. Moving into spot number 7, we have another medal I don't have. Final Fantasy Record Keeper Sephiroth is taking this number 7 slot. So this medal is really, really solid for a lot of different reasons. First of all, right now in the game, it boasts one of the highest, if not the highest, strength stat going right above 30,000, which is really, really high. When it got its upgrade, it just became fantastic. Not only that, but it almost has the ability to self-buff itself. So it gives you plus 15 general strength, plus 15 power strength, and then plus 15 reverse strength, as well as giving the enemy minus 15 power defense and then minus 15 reverse defense. All it's missing is 15 general defense down, and that metal is pretty much taking care of itself. It has a pretty decent multiplier. Again, when you stack it on top of the strength, it becomes a very, very strong metal. And not only that, it has a gauge cost of 1. So it pretty much takes care of itself. It's really, really cheap. Um, and the fact that it only does one hit means that it can really help you in terms of a speed fight because you don't have to watch a very long animation, there's not a lot of hits to watch, so when it comes to speed contests, it is definitely going to be a very solid one-hit attacker that you're able to use. Moving on to the number 6 slot, we have Kingdom Hearts 3 Xemnas, which is going to be the first of the medals that has the new mechanic of being able to give strength to a certain type of metal 
after its activation. So in this case, Kingdom Hearts 3 Xemnas is going to be giving all reverse metals that come after him plus 1500 strength. If you have extra attack on him, that's going to be plus 3000 strength. And if you're copying him with a copycat metal that has extra attack, it's going to be plus 6000 strength. So as you can see, this list can pretty much go on and on, pretty much giving your metals later down in the Keyblade a lot of additional strength. If you saw the recovery buffing video, you know that you can reach upwards of 20,000, 30,000. So this has a lot of capability to it. If you use the mechanic well, you can have metals of upwards to two to three times the amount of strength they originally had. On top of that new mechanic, the supernova attack is going to be able to lower general defense of all enemies, which is very, very crucial because a lot of the metals that we talked about up until this point do not have the ability to decrease enemies' general defense. So this can actually be very, very staple for some people just as a buffer almost. Uh, so it's a really, really solid supernova attack. The reason I'm putting kind of a limiter on this is that even though it costs zero gauges and has all those great things about it, it does have damage plus the more gauges are full, meaning that it has to be sort of early on in your setup unless you have a bunch of healing metals, a bunch of SP zero metals, uh, because if you're not going in with, I think someone, someone back in the day said it was at least 10 gauges. I'm not really sure. I haven't tested it myself, uh, but having to have more gauges means that this is not going to be a more of a late keyblade kind of metal unless you're able to restore those gauges otherwise you're not hitting the max multiplier um and it only buffs for power strength and power defense for the supernova attack which can make it sort of limiting on some setups where you'll need additional buffers and additional metals in order to get those other psm stats down in order to uh kind of make the most amount of damage so this metal is going to work best on Dark Gnaw for mo the most part, um, and because of limitations like that, it got bumped down to the number 6 slot on my list. Moving on to the number 5 slot, this is going to go to Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie B as well as Kingdom Hearts 3 Xion. Again, I know those are two metals, that's why I said top 10, but they do have more or less the same ability with just different attributes. So the big reason that these made it to the list is because it has the ability to give for Kyrie B, plus 5,000 upright strength for all metals after it, and then for Kingdom Hearts 3 Xion, plus 5,000 reverse strength for all metals that come after the activation. That just makes these metals so, so versatile. It allows you to have just big bursts of strength for a single turn in order to do a lot of damage really, really quickly. And it also costs zero gauges. Um, unfortunately, the strength stat falls very, very short because it didn't get the strength boost like a lot of the other supernova medals did. But after its activation, it brings it up to roughly about 28,000, which is a really, really solid number. Costs zero gauges, has the ability to increase your own defense, um, and it also gives that plus 280% special attack bonus when you activate its supernova attack. It's got a lot of, it's strange because it's an attacking Kyrie metal that still has a lot of utility built into it. So when you think about it, if this, because this has extra attack on it, when you compound it on the normal skill on top of the supernova attack, all my upright metals after this metals activation alone plus its supernova attack are going to be getting plus 6,000 upright strength and that is a lot of strength to be able to deal with. So for that reason, because of its solid attacking ability, because it's an ability to still buff while still being an attacker, and zero gauges increases your defense, this metal as well as Kingdom Hearts 3 Xion are going to take the number 5 slot on my list. Speaking of metals that are able to buff as well as do a lot of damage, in the number 4 slot we have Kingdom Hearts 3 Aqua, Kingdom Hearts 3 Terra, as well as Kingdom Hearts 3 Ventus. Again, they're all clones of each other, minus their attribute, so Terra is going to cover power, Ventus is going to cover speed, and Aqua is going to cover magic. But they do have that new mechanic where they increase strength of metals after its activation based on the attribute. So in this case, let's just use Kingdom Hearts 3 Aqua as an example. Kingdom Hearts 3 Aqua is going to buff all magic metals that come after it by plus 1500 strength. Again, with extra attack, that's plus 3000. But because it buffs magic metals, it works well with copycat metals. So let's say you're taking an Angelic Amber and you're copying a Kingdom Hearts 3 Aqua. That Angelic Amber becomes magic and it's going to get the buff from the Kingdom Hearts 3 Aqua. Let's say you're using Diamond Dust instead of something like Counterpoint. Because again, those setups are magic based, even though Aqua is upright blue, 
she's still gonna give a buff to all the other all the other metals in the diamond dust even though the rest of them are all gonna be reversed so because it buffs a certain type of attribute that makes it a little bit more versatile than the Kingdom Hearts 3 Xemnas that we talked about earlier where it only buffs reverse so because of that versatility because of its high amount of attacking strength because of its solid multiplier it's got a lot of things going for it but for those reasons these medals get the number four slot in my top 10 list we are down to our final three with the number three slot going to ultimate form sora a medal that just came out recently we got 30 free traits for him and i hope everyone was able to pull for him and get solid traits but this medal easily takes the number three slot because of its high strength stat being above 30,000, which is going to be pretty much a staple for moving forward. It's got an unconditional times 14.9 multiplier, which is really good because it's not affected by things like your health, how many medals you've used before it, how many gauges you have, if there's one enemy left or multiple enemies left. So an unconditional 14.9 multiplier is really really good it only costs three gauges and it does super effective damage on all enemies regardless of what their attribute is so normally when you have to fight a power enemy and you're using a speed metal you're not getting a lot of damage out of there because power is strong against speed and you're just not dealing as much damage as you could be but ultimate sora fixes that because it ignores the attribute and just does super effective damage right away so if you use this metal's activation on a power enemy you're still dealing super effective damage as if you were hitting it with a magic metal which is really really good especially since we're moving into a format where they want to make that super effective damage more potent where they're trying to buff up the mono keyblades so that super effective damage is more important than keyblade multipliers almost trying to make those mono keyblades comparable to starlight stroke of midnight and fairy stars so this super effective damage is going to be very very crucial moving forward and that is another reason i think ultimate form sora deserves this spot on top of the fact that ultimate form sora has the ability to take care a lot of buffs and debuffs for you so first of all it gives all your upright metals that come after it plus 1500 strength and if you've got extra attack that's 30 hundred strength or 3000 strength to all your upright metals after it if you're copying it again we're looking at even higher amounts of upright strength for everything after the activation which can be very very strong as we've talked about with the past few metals here not only that but it buffs upright and psm so all power speed magic is going to be getting a buff for you and a debuff for the enemy granted it is only by seven but the supernova attack makes up for it because the supernova activation decreases the uh, enemy's upright defense and psm defense as well as increases your upright strength as well as your psm strength so it rounds out that way to give you the maximum amount if you have extra attack on this thing you won't even need to activate the supernova attack to get pretty much those max buffs so because of all this ultimate form sora is a really really good metal that i hope again everyone is able to get and do really well on their traits for him and easily take the number three slot on my list we are at the final countdown for my top 10 list and taking the number two slot is going to be kingdom hearts 3 anti aqua now while this metal doesn't have a lot of the stuff the newer metals have such as the ability to increase the strength of all metals downstream of it it doesn't inherently have greater than 30,000 strength it just has that 100 percent magic damage reflection which is just ridiculously game breaking it's almost unfair how good that effect is this metal alone has the ability to stop your opponent in pvp almost instantly so let's say your opponent is really relying on monster form sora to deal crazy amounts of guard break damage anti-aqua if you go first is going to reflect all of that that monster sora goes from being super useful to actually hurting you so because of this it's just so strong um kingdom hearts 3 shion kingdom hearts 3 Kyrie b both of those are magic metal so it's still gonna reflect those supernova attacks it's gonna reflect the regular attacks it's gonna reflect kingdom hearts 3 aqua it reflects the, that 100 percent reflection is just so so strong it's so so game breaking this metal in two instances has been almost vital to some people's strategies for doing things so the first thing is going to be that one coliseum month where everyone was fighting the blue copter thing the blue alien looking ufo heartless uh using anti aqua was vital to passing that quest using this plus uh 
Chain of Memories Nomine was the other medal. So these two medals in combination were able to get people into tier 11 for that Coliseum month, which is nuts because that was so, so difficult otherwise without needing the uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 Anti-Aqua Reflection ability. Not only that, but this medal was used, I think it was either last month or the month before that, where we had the Hades Cup. So some people, if they couldn't defeat Hades normally, they could just cheese them with Anti-Aqua. And that's a big... That's a big deal because people got 5,000 jewels from being able to complete that quest. So while it's not super broken in comparison to other metals, it just has such a unique ability that is able to turn the tide of things so, so strongly. Not only that, but its supernova attack has guard break on it, which is crazy. It has a 30% guard break chance, which when we talked about Monster Form Sora is a really, really high statistic. It can deal a lot of damage to the enemy, and it also activates in sl before slot number 5, which is important because you need to get the buffs for reverse before hitting that point. So because it activates late, it just means that the guard break, if it goes through, you have more time to buff yourself, and that guard break has more time to do damage. Damage. So because of the guard breaking, because of the reflection, this metal is a really, really, still in my opinion, still broken metal. It's so broken that no other metal after it has 100% reflection. The closest thing is going to be Kingdom Hearts 3 Roxas with that 15% power reflection, but that's like nothing. 15% is such a small number in comparison to 100%. Kingdom Hearts 3 Anti-Aqua, even though it might be a little bit of a bias from my personal standpoint, it's just still broken to this day. Where it fits, it fits so beautifully that there is nothing that can contest it. And for that reason, it takes the number two slot on my list. And at the top of the ladder is going to be Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie A and HD Xion. While these medals are not attacking medals, they're just so staple that they belong in every setup, even if it's not on the appropriate slot. So even if, for example, King Arch the Kyrie A is not on an upright power slot, you're still gonna put it there sometimes. Um, same thing for HD Xion. They just do so much. They set up your whole Keyblade down the line, giving you plus general strength, and then giving the enemy minus general defense again, which is a very, very hard commodity to come by. It also takes care of almost your PSM strength and the PSM defense of the enemy, just grazing it short by three, which is super easily accomplishable by pretty much almost any tier nine down the line. It increases the count of the enemy by two. It restores all of your HP. It gives you 10 gauges, restores 10 gauges, and then it also cures your status ailments. This is the perfect setup metal. It's so strong that it almost takes care of itself and metals down the line from it. And it costs zero gauges. It's really hard to think of a setup that's really, really good that doesn't start with Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie A or HD Xion within the first two slots. These metals are so good that in some proud mode quests where you're only allowed to equip two metals and the restriction is you can only use single target metals, you use a copy metal plus this. Like, they're just really that strong. Its supernova ability has the ability to restore pretty much all your buffs and then give the enemy all the debuffs for this attack plus another attack. Meaning that if you're fighting like a barrier master and you mistime something and the barrier master gets knocked out, restores the defense of the enemy and actually increases its defense and then decreases your buffs, that is overwritten by Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie A or HD Xion Supernova attack, allowing that metal plus the one after it, after the Supernova activation, to have pretty much maximum buffs. That is just such a strong ability, and it's just so staple in our setups that it's hard to imagine this not being the number one slot in my top 10 list. And that wraps up my top 10 list for the best medals in Kingdom Hearts Union Cross. Again, my very first top 10 list. Please let me know in the comments below what you think I can improve on so that way when I do the next top 10 list, I'll be able to kind of refine my ability to do the descriptions a little bit better. I know there's a few things that I missed such as not talking about the Keyblade setups where they work best, things like that. So I know I missed a few things here and there, but for the most part, I was able to get across the ideas that I thought of when I was making this top 10 list here. So again, it is just my personal opinion. By all means, you are entitled to have your own opinion. Let me actually know down in the comments below what your top 10 list is so that we can do some comparison, kind of talk about it. So that way, when I do this video again, if I do it again, 
which is probably going to be in about three to four months because the meta doesn't change that much. Uh, but for when I do it again, I have a little bit more information. I have a little bit more perspective on what you think the top 10 medals are, and I might be able to incorporate that into the next video. So that's all for now, everyone. Again, it's kind of a lengthy video because I did quite a bit of explanation. But as always, if there are any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to drop them down in the comments below, and I'd be happy to answer when I have the time. But as always, everyone, until next time, take it easy.